Um, so with that being said, everyone, um, let me just kind of recap a little bit in terms of, of what, uh, how everything will, will, will go moving forward. So, um, well, first off, let me ask you all if, if anyone has any questions first, because um, I know, you know, since we kind of lost some time, uh, I just wanted to see if anyone had any questions to begin with. Uh, and then I'll kind of explain a little bit about, you know, what we'll do moving forward. And, and like I said, if I have to, you know, if I have to pause a little bit, you know, while I'm talking, just please bear with me. I'm still not 100 percent, but, um, you know, but I'll be but I'll be better. Um, OK, so the quick. OK, yeah, yes. Um, OK, yeah. And then thank you so much. I was actually going to get into that. So so what I've decided to do is I've decided to push everything back. Um, so the, 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 the chapter one stuff that I had open for you all, and I'm sorry that I wasn't able to uh, get the rest of the stuff open. What, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be opening up uh, the next couple of chapters early for you all so that you all can you know, work ahead if you all want to. Um, the chapter one stuff is not going to be due till next week, um, you know, since we'll we'll talk about it a little bit, you know, and and and, uh, and we'll discuss it a little bit today. Um, but yeah, so so the chapter one stuff won't be due till next Tuesday, uh, the 27th. Um, what I'm also going to the test. Be, OK, all right. So so let me. So, OK, so good question, Nicholas. OK, so so the test. All right. Now. The test is going to there's going to be two options for the test. Um, you can either take it in person or you could also take it online. All right. So, so I'll give you all the option that, you know, so I like it. Um, so, so I'll, I'll have those two options for you all. So it's up to you all in terms of what you feel most comfortable doing. Um, it's going to be multiple choice. Yes. Um, I'm still in the process of making the test. Uh, so I, I'm thinking I'm probably going to do 50 questions, uh, two points each. Uh, that's probably what, what I'm thinking of doing. Uh, maybe it might be a little bit longer, but we'll see. Um, I want I don't want to try to make the test too lengthy, but um, but I'm, I'm I'm still in the process of of, uh, of of setting that up. What I'm also gonna do is I'm also gonna do give you all a study guide for the first test. Uh, when would it be? Okay, I know. So the first test is going to be after we finish. Um, it's gonna cover chapters one through four. So after we finish uh, going over chapter four, uh, that's when we'll have the first test. Okay, so so it's chapters one through four. Let me let me type this up in the chat. Um, okay, so the first exam will cover chapters one through four, um, and so once we once we finish uh, uh, chapter four, uh, then we'll have the uh, the first test here. Now, because we lost a little bit of time, we might have to double up a little bit later in the semester, but I mean, that's fine. We, we've got plenty of time to where if we have to maybe cover like, you know, like a couple chapters per week or whatever, that's fine. We can, we can go ahead and do that. Um, but, uh, but we've got enough time. Uh, I don't, you know, the, we've got enough time to, to cover everything that we need to. We might just have to do it a little bit faster, but you know, it's fine. These things happen. I mean, um, I wasn't expecting to get sick, but you know, it happens, life happens. So, um, but yeah, the first test will be chapters one through four. Um, so like I said, I'm, what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going I'm to move some due dates around. Um, what I also want to tell you all really quickly is because of, you know, me being sick and all that, we can operate on what I like to call um, like soft deadline, I guess, or the more proper term is soft line, so to speak, where I'll have the, you know, the, the, the due date set. But if you need extra time to turn in stuff, that's fine. Um, like I said, you know, we're, we're kind of having to make some some changes to the schedule already. So, so we can operate, you know, on that. Um, we can operate that way where if, let's say, you need a little bit more time, like to turn in the, you know, the quiz or the primary uh, source exercise, that's fine. Um, just try to get get them in. You know, try, if you can get them in by the due dates, you know, that'd be that'd be great. In fact, that's excuse me. Sorry about that. Okay, hold on. Very sorry about that. Um, so that that is what I would um, what I would definitely want for you all to do if you can. But if you need a little bit more time, don't like don't panic. Don't feel like oh the sir is not going to accept late work. Like it's fine. Just uh, try to get everything in uh, when, you know, as quickly as you can. But if you need a little bit of extra time, that's fine. And of course, I'll, I'll let the other class know that as well. 
Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to open up. Um, I'm going to open up um, some chapters early. Okay, so I'll be working on that uh, this week where I'm going to try to open up uh, the second chapter as well as the third chapter. So I'm going to try to open up these chapters early so that you all can already kind of get a head start if you all want to. I know that uh, you all had still been uh, working on trying to get your textbooks, so I guess it's kind of okay that if I was going to get sick, it would be good that it happened at the beginning of the semester when, when everyone was still trying to get their textbooks. So I guess it kind of worked out as well. Um, you know, because I understand that that also might take a little bit of time as well. So, but yeah, so, so, so we'll do that. Um, okay, so some other questions you all have. Um, I want to know if, if you all have any other questions. Um, and then uh, other questions, uh, is there anything else that I can help you all with before we kind of, you know, discuss a little bit about uh, uh, chapter one here? Um, any other questions that I can help you all with? Or does that kind of make sense? Or uh, the quiz? Yes, yes, to do, it's due on the 27th, yes, it'll be due next uh, Tuesday, yes, as well as the primary source exercise, yes, yes, so, um, and like I said, I will open up the, the, the next couple of chapters, and, and we'll do that throughout the rest of the semester, I will open up the next couple of chapters, where if you all want to get a head start on that, um, you're more than welcome to do so, um, you know, and like I said, so, so for the, for, so after we finish chapter four, that's when we'll have the, um, uh, the first uh, exam here, so. Um, okay, I know someone else also asked a question about discussions. Just remember that the discussions are, we don't have weekly discussions, we have unit discussions, so there's just going to be one discussion per, per unit. Um, so uh, be on the lookout for that. I'll let you all know when it's ready. Um, I'm still in the process of looking to see which one I'm going to use, but, but yeah, so there'll be, there'll be uh, one unit discussion. Um, also keep in mind, and we'll, we'll talk about this when, 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 when it's unit discussion week. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll show you all uh, the discussion, and then we'll, I'll walk you all through in terms of how to work on it. Uh, what are the, um, the things I'm looking for? I mean, we kind of went over this on the first day, but, um, you know, since I've been out, maybe we could use a little bit of a refresher, but, um, but yes, I'll explain to you all in terms of like the, uh, the word requirements, uh, what I'm looking for in terms of the responses. So I'll, so I'll give you all some, some good advice on, on how to complete these so that that way, um, you know, you'll be able to do well on them. Um, okay, any other questions? Any other questions? Are there any other questions I can help you out with? Okay, sounds good. All right, okay, very good. Okay, so so I know that we've kind of been on chapter one for a while. Um, have you all had a chance to go through chapter one? Have you all had a chance to uh, kind of uh, read through it, um, kind of familiarize yourself with it? Have you all had a chance to, um, um, hopefully you all have uh, by this time since we've spent a little bit too much time on it but but uh okay so i just wanted to see yeah so 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 what we'll do right now is we'll kind of go over like you know some of the key points that i want you all to focus on in chapter one uh you know we'll discuss it a bit here um so let me go ahead and let me let me see if i can share my screen really quickly uh so that way we can um uh, i always struggle with this because th this setup is, looks different than the other collaborate i use so but okay hold on so Okay. All right. Okay. So that's okay. So anyway, so, so also just to reiterate everyone. So, um, so obviously of course, uh, you know, what we'll be doing with, within our, our class meetings is we'll be kind of, you know, uh, we'll be, we'll be taking a look at the outline and we'll kind of be looking at, you know, some of the key points, you know, within the outline that I want you all to focus on, um, for extra enrichment. Of course, I also have, um, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, I have, you know, the, um, uh, and the PowerPoints, the flashcards, there's also author videos as well as uh, some other lecture videos that I found that look really good, as well as uh, the Crash Course uh, History and Crash Course, you know, US History and World History videos that uh, I'm gonna be adding here as well. Um, so there's a lot of extra stuff that you all can look at, um, as well as additional resources that I'm still gonna be adding uh, throughout the semester as well here. So there's a lot of good stuff there that, that, I, that I want to uh, populate within uh, Blackboard for you all so that you all can kind of get a good sense of, of you know, so you all can have everything that you all need in terms of uh, uh, progressing through our class here. Um, but yeah, anyway, so with that being said, um, so obviously, of course, you know, this chapter, of course, is the introductory chapter to, uh, you know, to U.S. history. Uh, so we definitely got to start from the very beginning, right? And this, and a lot of this stuff you probably already have seen before. Um, you all, I mean, you all are probably familiar with the, um, you know, with, with the, uh, 
with the Native Americans, you know, coming across the land bridge, uh, you know, from Asia back when Siberia and Alaska were, you know, connected, uh, you know, back, you know, the, you know, 15,000 to 60,000 years ago, right? So, so this is, you all probably are very familiar with this, right? You know, we, we've, we've taught this throughout, uh, throughout K through 12, and it's something that I'm sure you all are, are very familiar with, um, you know, growing up and, and learning about it in, in, in your history classes, right? So, um, so it's definitely interesting to see, um, you know, when we, when we look at this history in terms of just how developed, you know, a lot of these Native Americans group wor groups were, you know, such as, um, you know, if you look at, you know, the Aztecas, the Mayans, you know, um, also you know, to the Incas, and then, of course, you know, down in South America, and then, of course, also within our own uh, Native American groups within uh, North America as well here. It's very interesting to see, you know, just how, um, you know, how intricate these, uh, these civilizations were type of thing, right? So, so yeah, so definitely, you know, do, do focus on that as well as some of these other groups, such as the mound builders of the Mississippi River Valley. Um, you know, definitely be, be familiar with them as well. Uh, you know, and, and also, and this chapter does a good job of looking at a lot of these different groups, uh, you know, such as the Hopi and the Zuni, uh, you know, over in, uh, in the American Southwest, you know, um, as well as, you know, the, the, the Pueblo Native Americans. So, so definitely do take a look at, at that as well. So, so definitely do familiarize yourself with, with a lot of the different, um, you know, tribes that we see here. I mean, we'll talk more about these, uh, these Native American tribes later on as we go through. Sorry about that. I totally forgot that I hadn't silenced my phone. I apologize for that. Um, so be familiar with, 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 with some of these groups as well. Um, definitely be familiar with Poverty Point and Hokia. These, of course, were, um, you know, were, were major trading posts with, you know, within uh within the mississippi and ohio river valleys you know so definitely uh do familiar, be familiar with them as well um it goes more into detail in terms of how the native americans live so this is also another key point that i definitely want you all to focus on is um native americans are very unique when it comes to the different tribes and and this is also something you probably are familiar with right that not every american native american group is the same right you've probably seen some of those stereotypes right like you know, when, when people think of Native Americans, what they think of like the teepees and, and with the feather caps and hunting the buffalo and all that, you know, that, that, that's the stereotype of Native Americans, right? But, but, uh, but there's so much more to Native Americans, right? You know, the, obviously there, there's all kinds of, of, of different tribes and groups uh, and they're going to have their, and, and, and the thing that the book talks about is that their adaptability to, uh, to where they live, right? So of course, you know, uh, Indian tribes living in the eastern part of North America sustain themselves with dyed corn, squash, and beans, supplemented by fishing and hunting. So depending on where they live, that would determine what um, what resources they would, uh, you know, that they would be able to find and use those resources in order to sustain themselves, right? So obviously, of course, if you've got Native Americans living by the coast, they're going to obviously, of course, be drawn to the ocean and and and, and fish in the ocean and ultimately. Uh, use, you know, fishing for sustenance and all that. Um, and of course, not every area within North America um, has the same type of crops or the same types of, uh, of livestock available, right? Same type of animals. So they, they would definitely have to, to, to adapt here. And then of course, they also believed in uh, animism, right? The, um, you know, if you've seen like Pocahontas, right, you're probably familiar with, you know, the concept of, you know, the animals and, and, and the trees and the forest having spirits and, and everything, uh, you know, having, having uh, you, know, you know, these spirits and all that. So, so the Native Americans were very spiritual in terms of how they, you know, how, how, they, uh, how they treated the land, how they viewed the land and, and everything that, you know, the, the, the land itself was also, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, a living being as well and things like that. So they were very spiritual in terms of how they, they viewed the land. And we'll, and we'll talk about how this is, this is different from how the Europeans view the land and Europeans view the land more as a, a, uh, as, as objects that, you know, that needed to be owned and, 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 uh, and, and things like that. So, so of course this was a very uh, difference in philosophy here, right? So, so, so the book again talks more about, you know, you know, religion and how also that influenced their, um, you know, you know, their way of life. Um, the idea of, of owning private property, like, like I just mentioned, was foreign to Native Americans. This was, they believed more in communal resources and that, you know, instead of private ownership. Uh, so again, we would see this come into conflict here 
uh, with the, uh, you know, with, with the Europeans as they would come over, right? And so uh, gender relations, of course, also we, we saw that, um, you know, that uh, that because men would, would you know, would, would a lot of, you know, a lot of the men would be away from from the uh, from the homes because they would out, you know, be, be out uh, going on hunts. Uh, women would maintain a lot of the administrative duties as well as, you know, household duties and agricultural duties of, of the tribe and things like that. Um, so again, so, so the first, so the, so the first part of this chapter, of course, obviously, you know, deals with, uh, the Native Americans and the early relationships that the Europeans had with them, right? And so the Europeans, of course, viewed the Native Americans as, um, they viewed the Native Americans, obviously, of course, you know, you're probably familiar with, 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 um, you know, if you've seen like movies and documentaries, right? The Europeans probably did not have a very, um, let me just check the chat to see if there's anything. I just want to see if there's anything here in the chat here. Um, okay, yeah, the Native, so obviously, of course, the, the, the Europeans did not view the Native Americans very favorably, right? Of course, they did not view them as, you know, being as intelligent or articulate and, and, and not, uh, not being as civilized, right? Because of this differing viewpoint that the Native Americans had when it came to the land and the resources that they were using, right? So they, so the native, so the the Europeans felt that, well, if the Native Americans aren't owning the land, then we can own it, right? If they're not using it, I mean, at least using it in terms of the way the Europeans saw it, right? Yes, the Native Americans were using it, but they were using it in a more communal fashion as opposed to, um, as opposed to the Europeans who, like I said, they 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 believed more in in private ownership. So again, this was just a this was a difference of opinion here in terms of, and difference of philosophy, difference of culture. Um, and of course, obviously the Europeans did not, um, they didn't feel that the, the Native Americans had a genuine religion, right? They did not believe in this idea of an, animalism and things like that. They, of course, obviously the Europeans were bringing Judeo-Christian, uh, you, know, you know, religious viewpoints. And so this came into conflict with the Native Americans, right? Um, so again, some more philosophical differences. Uh, Europeans concluded that the notion of freedom was alien to Indian societies. Europeans concluded that uh, Indians were barbaric because they were too free. So again, the, the, the key, one of the key things that I want you all to note here is not necessarily that, I mean, all of this, of course, you know, we, we, we have to look at it from different perspectives, right? So obviously, of course, the Europeans have their own perspective in terms of how humans should live. And you also have to remember that at this time, religion is something that is very big in people's personal lives, you know, especially when it comes to the Europeans, right? The Europeans, um, very big on religion. Um, uh, you know, we'll talk about the pilgrims, you know, uh, next week in terms of, you know, uh, their reasons for coming over, which were, were based on, on, uh, you know, on very deeply held religious beliefs. We'll talk about that, but yes, but do, do keep in mind that religion is something that's very big for the Europeans in terms of, uh, driving their decisions and ultimately influencing their way of life. So if they come into contact with people who don't, not only don't have the same type of religion, but maybe don't believe, you know, the same way that they do, this is going to be something that's going to be causing a lot of philosophical and cultural problems here. And so we'll, we'll see how this uh, progresses uh, later on here, right? So, but anyway, so, and then we'll, of course, we'll talk about Christian liberty as well when we get to the Puritans. Um, Europeans believed that to embrace Christ was to provide freedom from sin. Christian liberty had no connection to later ideas of religious tolerance. So the book talks about how this idea of uh, Christian liberty is kind of different from what we might perceive of today, right? The idea, you know, more modern interpretations of liberty are that, you know, this idea of right to privacy, this idea of being free. Um, so Christian liberty felt freedom from sin, right? Not, not freedom to do whatever you wanted, but freedom from temptation. And so in order to be free from temptation, you had to adhere to the Christian faith. So it's kind of an interesting take on, on liberty, so to speak, right? Um, so yeah, like I said, religion uh, permeated every aspect of people's lives. It, it really influenced people more. I'm not saying that religion isn't important today because it definitely is. There's still a lot of people that uh, are deeply devoted to their faith. I know I am as well. But the point that the book tries to make is that religion 
was not just confined to someone's personal life. You know, religion was, was evident in, in, uh, in government. It was evident in the economy. It was evident everywhere, right? That, that, that pretty much every decision that was being made by people was made through a religious lens first. Like, you know, so, so that's what I'm trying to say. Does that make sense? That, that, that religion was, is um, every decision that was made, you know, through this lens of religion here, right? So, um, but yeah, anyway, it just, it goes more into detail in terms of, um, you know, this idea of freedom and authority and how, um, you know, and how, of course, it was influenced by religion. And of course, also under English law, women held very few rights and were submissive to their husbands because again, uh, going back to, you know, the religious influence, right? You know, you know that this comes from, you know, doctrines that we see like in the Bible, uh, where women are supposed to be subservient to to men and all this. So, so there was a lot of a lot of this that was going on uh, because of the the interpretation, the religious interpretation that was going on, you know, and, and things like that. So, so of course, we'll talk about this how this how this uh, progresses uh, later on here. Um, but yeah, anyway. So, so, so we'll talk more about this. We'll talk more about uh, you know Christian liberty. We'll talk a little bit more about it in the next chapter because the the Puritans definitely do. Uh, subscribe to this uh, this idea as well. So, okay. So then, of course, we get to the expansion of Europe. So, also definitely do uh, really take a look at this in terms of of um, you know, obviously, of course, the Europeans coming over and looking at the different groups. Um, so, of course, you know, we had China, the Chinese Admiral Zheng He led uh, sub, uh, seven naval expeditions into the Indian Ocean between 1405 and 1433, even exploring East Africa on the sixth voyage. So, so this is where we start to see. Um, Excuse me, let me just take a sip of water really quickly. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is where we start to see, um, you know, the Europeans already also start to uh, to engage in travel, um, engage in this uh, maritime travel. So, so we, we start to see it with the Portuguese, right? Um, Africa was a wealthy continent and the search for African gold drove the early explorers. Portuguese established trading posts, factories along the western uh, coast of Africa. Unfortunately, we began colonizing Atlantic islands and established sugar plantations worked by slaves, such as the Azores, um, as well as, you know, some of these other, uh, you know, trading outposts, um, you know, in, in uh, you know, in Africa here. Um, so, the, so the Portuguese, of course, were, were kind of the first ones to really uh, begin with a lot of this, uh, you know, this maritime exploration and then, um, of course, obviously, we would see, uh, this is where we started to see the beginnings of, you know, the transatlantic slave trade. Um, you know, slavery was already one form of labor in Africa before the Europeans came. So what we mean by that is that slavery was already existing in Africa amongst the, uh, you know, the different uh, warring tribes there in Africa. But now we were starting to see uh, the slave trade expand into Europe, right, where now the Europeans were starting to uh, trading textiles and guns for African slaves, right? So uh, this is where we started to see that. And of course, it would this would definitely be a very uh, major. Um, this would definitely be a, ma a major theme within American history as we as we progress with the beginning of the of the uh, slave trade. And then Vasco da Gama sailed to India in 1498. Portugal had established a vast uh, trading empire, right? So so the Portuguese were taking the lead uh, here when it came to um and and again and you have to remember that the portuguese their main because some of these some of these different countries are going to have different uh, uh different strategies and different goals and endeavors right so so the portuguese the dutch also did this too the portuguese were mostly uh interested in setting up trading outposts not necessarily uh conquering enormous amounts of land although they would claim brazil um it would be the Spanish and the French and the British that would, those countries would be the ones to, um, not to say that they weren't interested in trading posts, but they were also interested in in, uh, in claiming these vast amounts of land for their empires, right? So then this, of course, leads us to Christopher Columbus, um, who was an Italian, was able to get financial support from King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain. And in the same year, 1492, I mean, you all know this, right? This is definitely very, very famous history. Um, the king, the king and queen completed the Reconquista, ordering all Muslims and Jews to convert to Catholicism or leave the country. So this is this was the the unification, right, of, of Spain that had been fighting against the Moors for hundreds of years, and ultimately led, you know, we have of course the Spanish Inquisition, and, and ultimately led to, um, 
you know, the, the, the Jews and, and, and the Muslims either having to, uh, to convert to, to Catholicism or have to leave the country, right? So at this time, of course, Columbus in the New World lands in Hispaniola, 1492, and colonization begins the next year. Nicolas de Ovando establishes a permanent base in Hispaniola, and Amerigo Vespucci, who America is named after, sailed along the coast of South America between 1498 and 1502, right? So, so of course, you know, obviously, of course, you know, the, the, the history of Christopher Columbus, of course, obviously very well known. Um, you know, there is like some misnomers that everyone thinks, oh, he was trying to prove that the world was round and all that, you know, that had already been established. Um, you know that that the, that the world was around that, that what 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 Columbus was trying to to what he was trying to investigate was could he get to the to the could he get to the far east in a faster method instead of sailing around the horn of africa and going up through india could you just go west and then come around the other side which is true that that is true uh, had there not been the continent that was in the way right now, the book also mentions, of course, that, you know, Columbus was not the first European to, to reach North America. Of course, we had the Vikings and Eric the Red that, 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 that came over a couple of hundred years uh, before that. Um, but, you know, word didn't spread about, you know, that uh, uh, discovery across the rest of Europe, right? So, so, so Columbus was, was, you know, the first one to really, where we got that attention, right? And, there, and of course, this would lead to um, other explorers coming over, right? So, News could not travel quickly, especially uh, news could now travel quickly, especially with the invention of Johann Gutenberg's uh, printing press uh, in the early 1400s. Right, so had the printing press been around before then, the Vikings might have gotten more uh, notoriety for their discovery. So uh, John Cavan had traveled to Newfoundland in 1497, and soon many Europeans were exploring the New World. Right, so so now of course we had the British and the French also coming over. Right, so uh, Vasco Nunez de, de Balboa trekked across Panama, his first European to see the Pacific Ocean. Ferdinand Magellan led an expedition to sail around the world. So this is another uh, important expedition. Now, Magellan didn't make it across. He, he passed away on, on, uh, on his trip around the world, but, but his crewmen were able to make it uh, all the way back to, to Spain here. And then two Spanish conquistadores, Hernán Cortés and Francisco Pizarro, led devastating expeditions against the Aztec and Inca civilizations, respectively, in the early 1500s. So this, of course, is where... Uh, we start to see the beginnings of the black legend there, there there's a video that that, that i have on uh, on on blackboard that talks about this right talks about how that the spanish of course and and you all are familiar with 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 uh, these you know especially with cortez right cortez we, we cortez gets covered a lot especially like in texas history um uh, because obviously of course texas being a part of spain uh that is a part of our our state history as well so so we see that uh, you know cortez of course obviously you know, goes and, uh, um, you know, with the assistance of some other uh, warring Native American groups, they lead this um, this conquest against the Aztecas and ultimately uh, conquer Tenochtitlan, and then of course they they rebuild it into Ciudad Mexico. Um, but yeah, so 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 the thing, of course, I want you all to remember about the Spanish here in this chapter is, you know, what are what are the uh, what is the ambition of the Spanish, right? So so. When we look at the Spanish Empire, right? Um, I want you all to look at what their motives are. Why are they doing this? What are they looking to gain from the New World, right? I mentioned before how the Portuguese were more interested in trading outposts, whereas with Spain, their main, uh, their of course, you know, main main goal is you know to get rich, right? To be able to find gold and silver within uh, within uh, within uh, the Western Hemisphere, right? So. Uh, the Columbian Exchange transferred not only plants and animals, but also diseases such as smallpox and influenza. This is also important to remember because this, of course, is what caused so many of the Native Americans to. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought I had, uh, I thought I had uh, silenced that. Sorry about that. Um, this caused, of course, the Native Americans so much harm, so much, uh, so much devastation due to the fact that they did not have the antibodies against smallpox and influenza because they had been shielded away um you know for for centuries from the europeans right uh because this is the first time that the europeans have come into contact with the native american groups so so you can imagine what happened to them um because they just had never been exposed to these types of viruses right um you know that's why like like if like if if, if COVID happened back then um 
we'd be much safer because of the fact that we're we're not so they weren't so interconnected by then. The reason why it spread so fast was because everyone's all connected now, right? We've got airplanes and everyone can go anywhere in the world. So so back then when you didn't have uh, transportation like that. You could have a situation where you could have like one part of the world totally not be infected by viruses and, and illnesses and diseases uh, because there's no way for the disease to get to that other part of the world. Now, of course, it's different. But back then, um, yeah, they were pretty much shielded. But then once they they came into contact with the Europeans, uh, you know, almost all of them were wiped out. So native populations were significantly depleted through wars, enslavement, forced conversion, Christianity and disease here. So. Okay, um, okay, I want to see how much more we have to go. Okay, um, okay, so we'll, we'll try to cover as much as we as we can by today. Okay, so then of course, um, again, you know, focus of course on on the Spanish in terms of of uh, building up their empire here. Um, you know, the, Spain established a stable government model after Sp uh, Spanish home rule and absolutism, and power flowed from the king to the council of the Indies to viceroys to local officials. So. So this talks a little bit about the the um, the administrative setup within uh, uh, Spanish America, right? So so obviously, of course, you had uh, the king, and of course, you had the you know the, the viceroys, you know, who, who who were basically tasked with uh, overseeing you know the colonies. So like Mexico was was New Spain here. Uh, the Catholic Church played a significant role in the administration of Spanish colonies. So again, like I mentioned, uh, religion is very much intertwined with government. There is no uh, freedom of religion here at this point, uh, as we'll talk about later on when we get to uh, our U.S. Constitution. Uh, religion and, and, and government are working hand in hand here. So the Catholic Church, uh, very much in, in, in charge of administering Spanish colonies. You know, if, if you remember from Texas history, uh, the, the Catholic Church was responsible for setting up the missions, uh, you know, in San Antonio and, and Nacogdoches and, and Goliad and all these different areas. Um, you know, so so they 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 were allowed to be able to set up those missions uh, for administrative purposes here. Um, so colonists in, in Spanish America, gold and silver mining was the primary economy in Spanish America. Like we mentioned, mines were worked by Indians, and many Spaniards came to the New World for easier uh, social mobility. Yes, yeah, so 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 a lot of the Spanish that came over, they came over because it would be easier to be able to uh, move up within society in the New World. Uh, you know, kind of be able to, you know, get a fresh start a bit. Um, and ultimately, you know, because it'd be much harder to move up the ranks in, in, in the old world in Spain. Um, so this is what attracted a lot of people to come to, to the new world. You know, a lot of these conquistadores, you know, that they came, like we mentioned, uh, Cortes, Pizarro, Oñate was, was another one. Uh, Jose de Escandon, who is, is regarded as like the founder of South Texas. He also was one of these, uh, these uh, conquistadores that came over, and you know, one of the one of the later ones, and, and ultimately colonized uh, the area here along the Rio Grande on both sides of the Rio Grande. You know, with, with communities such as Matamoros, um, you know, Reynosa, Roma, Laredo. Um, you know, Revilla was it was a community that that uh, no longer exists, but it's where Zapata was uh, Zapata is today. So, so a lot of these you know uh, different communities are very very old. Like I know Roma was you know founded in the you know. Uh, back in the uh, in the 1700s, right? So, so just kind of give you a uh, a sense of you know how how old some of these uh, communities are, right? They, they they're they're very very old. Um, okay, so anyway, so let's continue. Uh, colonists and the Indians, like I said, uh, Indian inhabitants always outnumbered European colonists and descendants in Spanish America. Uh, the Peninsulares were people of European birth. Uh, so again, this is kind of going a little bit into the hierarchy, right? The Peninsulares were the the the, the Peninsulares were the um, the people that were born that, that were going to be born in Spanish America, but their parents were of European descent, right? Uh, Spanish America, so so these were pure blooded, but they were but they were born there in in in, in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, Spanish America evolved in a hybrid culture, part Indian, part Spanish, and in places part African. Mestizos were persons of mixed Indian and Spanish origin, right? And so this is where we had the the intermixing of, of the different uh, different races and the different groups, um, you know, and, and and of course this was this was a large part in in terms of you know forming the uh, you know the Hispanic community that we see even to this day, right, where people are of uh, mixed heritage, right. Um, so this is of course what, what, where where we saw this uh, happening here in uh, in uh, in Latin America here. Uh, justification for conquest to justify their claims to land that belonged to someone else. The Spanish relied on cultural superiority missionary zeal and violence. So this, this leads us to the, 
uh, the Black Legend. Uh, like I said, the Black Legend does talk about how how brutal the Spanish were in terms of how they they, they treated the Native Americans. Um, there was some uh, some pushback against this year. Um, uh, Bartolomo de, de las Casas wrote about the injustices of Spanish rule towards Indians. Las Casas ins insisted that Indians were rational beings and Spain had no grounds to deprive them of uh, land or liberty, right? So, we, so we believe that the entire human race is one, uh, favored uh, African slavery. So yeah, so Bartolomo de las Casas, he is interesting, right? Because he was he was fine with, with African slavery, but he, he, he felt that the Native Americans had to be uh, uh, treated with uh, respect here. So there's still, you know, it, uh, what I'm trying to say is that there, there, there's still that prejudice that we'll see, right? You know, and, and of course that, that'll, that'll still continue as we, as we continue uh, with our discussion here within uh, U.S. history here. Uh, missionary element existed from the church's long holy war against Islam and was rene uh, renewed with the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century. So this, of course, talks about, I, men I mentioned about the missions a little while ago, right? So uh, so the Spanish not only were, their two main objectives within the New World was obviously, of course, to, you know, try to, uh, you know, mine as much silver and gold as possible, but also to convert the Native Americans. So they felt that this was a, a religious duty set forth by God to them, that God put it in their path to discover, and I say this in quotations, right, to discover this brand new continent with this, this large group of people that have never heard of Jesus Christ, and the task before them is to convert them. So the Spanish looked at it as, as, a, um, as a responsibility, right, as, as, some, as, as an opportunity that was presented to them, that, that, that God willed for them to, to locate this continent with these um, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, that, that, uh, that had never heard the word. And so now it was their responsibility to try to convert them, right? And so uh, national glory and religious mission went hand in hand with the primary aim of the Spaniards uh, being to transform the Indians into obedient Catholic uh, uh, subjects of the crown. Not only diseases uh, contributed to massive deaths, but also brutal conditions of forced labor, like we were talking about, the, 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 uh, the black legend here. Many Spanish colonists saw no uh, contradiction between serving God and enriching themselves and the souls to be saved, but also be a labor force in the gold and silver mines. So you can see that, that the Native Americans were clearly exploited here by the Spanish. And so when we're talking about, when I was mentioning a little while ago, how brutal the Spanish were, this is an example right here. So the Spanish, of course, were extremely brutal to the Native Americans in terms of how they treated them not just uh, exploiting their natural resources, but also uh, making them basically give up their own natural resources, right? Working in the mines uh, to give up, to, you know, to mine the natural resources and to give those up to the Spanish, natural resources that belong to them. So to add insult to injury, not only are the Spanish stealing uh, their own natural resources, but they're the ones that are giving it to them. Does that kind of make sense? That, that they're the ones that are, that are mining it and having to hand it over to the Spanish so it was definitely, you know, hugely exploitative, uh, making the Spanish having to give up their religious faith because, again, as I mentioned, a lot of these Native American groups did uh, have their own religion, right? And so they had to give up their, their religion. They had to give up their, their native tongues. Uh, they had to give up everything, right? They had to give up, um, you know, they had, they had to give up everything in terms of their identity, uh, their cultural identity, their you know, their economic uh, identity and things like that. So they had, to, they had to give up so much to, you know, to, to the Spanish uh, in terms of, of what had, uh, had happened here. So, um, so again, so, so let's kind of continue a little bit here. Let's see. Um, okay, look, I think we can, we can finish off here with, with, with the, the end of the Spanish. Okay, so then, um, so reforming the empire, right? So Las Casas writings encouraged the 14, uh, 1542 new laws, which forbade Indian enslavement. And then in 1550, Spain abolished the, uh, encomienda system and replace it with the repartimiento system. Um, so again, so, so we would see how that, that the way that the Native Americans would uh, be treated and administered would, would, uh, would uh, be changing here, right? So um, exploring North America and what would become the future United States, Spain established the first permanent colony on the island of Puerto Rico and Fijinoe, which I don't know if you all heard in the news, they're getting, they, they just got battered yesterday by, by Hurricane Fiona, um, and now it's moving into, into the Dominican Republic. So 
I think I, I read that the, the entire island of Puerto Rico is without power right now. Just very, very sad situation. Of course, several years ago, they had Hurricane Maria that just totally devastated the island. So that they do live in that part of the world where they do get hurricanes, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so so my heart goes out to the people of Puerto Rico. Hopefully they'll be okay. Um, so Juan Ponce de Leon, the leader of, of the colony, uh, Tom Gomez, of course, Ponce de Leon, the, the, the fabled fountain of youth, right? That's what everybody knows him for, right? They were trying to find the fountain of youth in, in Florida. Uh, most other later European sett uh, settlements did not find gold. Uh, large Spanish exp uh, expeditions traveled through Florida, the Gulf of Mexico region, and the southwest, uh, southwestern United States. These expeditions, particularly Hernando de Soto's, brutalized Indians and spread uh, deadly diseases. So, uh, you know, Coronado, of course, is, 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 was another major, uh, his, his, of course, was, was another uh, major expedition as he traversed through the American Southwest looking for uh, the seven cities of Cibola, which, you know, which uh, were rumored to be these golden cities, right? If you've, if you've heard of the mysterious cities of gold, uh, that's the legend. They even made a, an anime series back in the 1980s about it, which I, I actually have. It's actually a really good series. It's, 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 one, of, it's, uh, it's one of the best cartoons ever made. If you ever, if you ever have a chance to watch it, I, I think it's on Netflix, but yeah, it's called the mysterious cities of gold. It's really cool. Um, anyway, so, um, so these, so, okay, so, the, so, so of course we have you know Coronado you know going through the American Southwest the, his his group of course they they're able to his expedition they discover the Grand Canyon they try to get down to the bottom of it but they can't because it's just way they're just way too high up uh, up on on the on the bluffs there uh, but they do claim it for for Spain uh, they're able to make it uh, Coronado makes it all the way to to modern day Kansas. Uh, and they're not able to find the, the the seven cities, but but again, they're able. So so even though uh, Coronado's expedition is considered like a successful failure because they didn't find any gold, but they were able to uh, colonize the American Southwest. That's why the American Southwest belonged to Spain because of Coronado's expedition. Uh, Florida, the first present day U.S. continental area colonized by Spain, had forts as early as the 1560s. I'm sorry that I'm talking a little bit too fast because we're already running out of time here to protect Spanish treasure fleets from pirates. St. Augustine was colonized in 1565. In 1566, the Spanish traveled far north to establish Santa Elena in present-day South Carolina. So they went, so they they went further north uh, from Florida, and they were able to, uh, to to establish a temporary outpost in uh, the South Carolina area. Spanish missionaries sought to convert Indians without much success. In as late as 1763, Spanish Florida had only 4,000 inhabitants of European descent. So that's another interesting aspect of the Spanish that. I want for us to remember is that the areas were not very highly populated, like Florida, Texas, um, even in New Mexico. Yes, they had Santa Fe, but these areas weren't uh, very highly populated, which ultimately contributed to to um, that was part of the downfall as to why the Spanish ended up losing or or Mexico, right? Because then Mexico uh, gained their independence and then they lost it to the United States. But, um, you know, that's one of the reasons as in terms of why that happened because of the sparsely populated areas. But we'll talk about it. So uh, then in 1598, Juan de, de Oñate led settlers into present day New Mexico. Oñate destroyed Acoma, a centuries old Indian city in response to an attack. And then we had the Pueblo revolt uh, that revolted against the Spanish in 1680. Pueblo Indians led by Pope rebelled against the Spanish colonists in present day New Mexico for forcing the Indians to convert to Christianity. Uh, but then ultimately the Spanish would, uh, so the Spanish were, were driven out by the Pueblo uh, Native Americans, but then they would, uh, they would return and reconquer them uh, uh, several years later here. Um, okay, all right, so, okay, so we'll stop here. That way we just have a little bit more to go. We'll see if we can kind of talk about the, the Dutch and the, and, and the French really quickly. So that, that won't take too long and then we'll, then we'll work on, on the second chapter here. So, um, okay, so then, so I hope that, that this was, that this was okay in terms of what I kind of, sorry about that. What I want you all to focus on within uh, chapter one, like I said, we'll we'll, uh, we'll go over the, the the French and the and the Dutch uh, a little bit later here. We'll we'll do that next week. So, uh, but yeah, definitely do do focus on on all this here in terms of uh, what we kind of talked about here today. I know I kind of went over that really quickly. Um, but does anyone have any questions or comments or concerns uh, before we end for today? So just remember that that we don't meet uh, Wednesday, right? So so on Wednesday is the five o'clock class. So so I'll see you all again uh, when it is time to see you all. I'll see you all again next Monday. So um, but does anyone have any questions or comments or or anything like that before we leave for today? Does this make more sense in terms of what I want y'all to focus on within chapter one? Does this kind of make more sense or?
Okay. All right. That makes sense. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, everyone. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Well, then I guess we, okay. If, if there's no other questions, then, uh, like I said, um, I'll open up the, the next chapters, uh, for you all a little bit earlier. So that way you all can work ahead if you'd like to, um, uh, I'll add those resources for you all as well. So that way, um, uh, you all can get a head start. And then, like I said, I'm very sorry that we kind of, um, uh, I am very sorry that we, 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 we lost some time here, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll pick it up uh, later on uh, throughout the semester. So, Okay, everyone. Well, thank you so much. Take care. Be safe. And uh, we're going to end for today. You all take care and uh, see you all uh, next week. Okay. Um, you all are welcome to stop by on the Wednesday meeting if you all like to. That, that's another thing also is that you all can, you all can pick and choose, right? You all, you all can, you all can do that if you all would like to. You don't have to, but, but you all can do that if you all like to. So, okay. So we'll go to an end for today. Thank you all. Take care. Be safe and uh, have a good rest of your day, everybody. Thank you all so much.